Hi, welcome everyone to the Selectman's meeting of September 21st, 2015 at 7.15 p.m. As you may have heard, I've been talking to my feet. This is being taped by ACMI. We also have members of the press, Mr. Sprague, Bob Sprague here, and I want to welcome Nick from the Arlington Advocate. So nice to see you. I uh, hope we see you for a long time. <laughs> and welcome to Arlington. Uh, <coughs> apologize for not being uh, promptly on time. We had a uh, tour of the fire station at 6.30. I don't know if the town manager wanted to speak to that or just explain that's why we certainly it, it, thank you madam chair so we uh tonight starting at 6 30 uh, as chairwoman mahan just mentioned we gave the board of selectmen and some members of the finance committee who were available a tour of the recently renovated and completed central fire station so it uh it was i i had the good fortune of having the tour a number of times but i think it was an opportunity for the board to see uh what a you know a completed uh you know, good capital investment is in the community, and to be able to, to learn a little bit about the fire department's operations. So I, I'm actually curious to see if the board had any, you know, comment or feedback after the tour. Mr. Dunn? I'll just say, um, so the first time I went through that building was right after I was elected. I did, uh, I sat down with each of the department chair, uh, department head, wow, department chair, chair people, and uh, Chief Jefferson took me through the old building, and so like you know, it was as we know in really terrible shape, and so you know if now four years later or whatever it is, I get another tour where I get to see what it, what it is renovated, and it is, it is a world of difference. It's something to be proud of. Sure. Um, yeah. No, I, I was really blown away by it as well, and um, I think uh, a, a lot of thanks does go out to the actual. Uh, people who are actual fire department who, you know, as we saw, did quite a lot of work themselves in there, and um, it, it really is home to them, and it, uh, it really speaks to, um, you know, how professional a department they are, and uh, I think they have great leadership under Chief Jefferson, so we're, uh, we're quite fortunate to have everyone there. Thank you. I was very impressed with the building, uh, both, you know, from a utilitarian standpoint, you know, of course, its primary purpose is to, you know, uh, facilitate the uh, public safety function, and also to um, to uh, provide a um, a you know uh, comfortable living space because our firefighters do live at the fire station for you know 24-hour shifts. Um, but in, in addition to its primary function, um, I was just really impressed with all of the care to the the detail. I would encourage anyone who can see it that the detail from the energy efficiency. Um, was put in the spaces for training that have been, that have been put into the, the station, the preservation of some of the architectural features, even though it's been thoroughly updated, some of the old architectural features, some of the art and history that are in there are amazing, and, and firefighting you know, is a profession with a long tradition, and I think that um, our department did a great job of trying to preserve that as well, and preserve Arlington's uh, traditions in there as well, alongside the uh, primary function. So uh, thank you for facilitating it, Mr. Uh, manager and and um, you know thank you to our department Chief Jefferson in particular for uh, seeing this through and, and I would encourage anybody from the public <coughs> a anyone who has public business down at, at the fire station in terms of permits or gathering information everything's handicap accessible there's an elevator um, it's a great place to see um, it's a really good testament to the firefighters who work there um, respecting the job that they do and help, helping them enable to do their jobs in terms of a fitness room and, and sleeping quarters, and I'm going to be the woman here, the girl. I was impressed with the security and the mechanical room, but I was blown away by the kitchen and the state of the art stove and everything that they have in there. Um, so please, if you can get down there, whether you have normal business or if you see something um, on the website or a town webpage. And we will be having an open house on a Saturday in early October. I don't have the exact date in front of me, uh, but very soon we'll have the uh, we'll, we'll push it out via the town's email list and the town's website, so the public will have an opportunity to, yeah. to take a tour. It's great, great tour. Okay, thank you, and thank you everybody for um, waiting for us. Agenda item two: an update on the Arlington Gateway project, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so one of the projects that Deputy Town Manager Andrew Flanagan has been working on uh, for quite a while since uh, last year's capital budget was. Uh, planning, designing, and then uh, getting towards implementation of some improvements to Arlington, uh, Arlington's gateways or entrances uh, from other communities. So uh, we'll get to Andrew's departure uh, in the next agenda item, but before Andrew goes, I did want to give him an opportunity to update the board uh, for the board's uh, information about where we are with the gateway project and what you can expect to see in the upcoming months in that project. Thank you, Adam, and members of the board. So 
Just about two years ago, uh, myself and Carol Kowalski, our Director of Planning and Community Development, put our heads together around um, an area I think we could really uh, make some significant improvements on, and those were our gateways, meaning uh, the point of entry into Arlington from some other town or city. Uh, there's actually, a, to surprise to us, there's actually 11 of them. Um, and we went out and uh, retained a landscape architect out of Lexington, Esker and Associates, to really go through what are some of our options were. Uh, I'm very appreciative to the Capital Planning Committee and Town Meeting and the <coughs> Finance Committee who um, all supported uh, the concept uh, through the appropriation at the last two town meetings actually uh, to, to provide us with the initial funding to um, uh, move forward with this. So given some of uh, our funding limitations, we decided on focusing in uh, on a few, or in this case three, uh, that were potentially in the most immediate need. Um, and those three were, uh, so at the intersection of River and the Parkway, where you're either coming from Somerville or Medford, no distinction here in Arlington. Um, at uh, Mystic from Winchester, um, where it's been, uh, it's been a really great job by citizen volunteers who've maintained that, and they've been a real part of, the Garden Club has been a real part of this throughout the process. Um, so those are the two we really initially focused on. Um, and then we turned our attention to uh, the entrance from Belmont right off Route 2 uh, at 60. In its current state, it's overgrown. Um, and there was a lot of work to be done there. So the things, what we, what we went into this hoping to do a few things. Um, redesign them, hardscape and landscaping improvements, landscaping that's as little maintenance as possible. And the plan is to bring irrigation to each site. Um, it's pretty easy to do getting, given where the water mains currently run. Um, so we're focusing on those three, and the other big element was going to be um, a sign design, uh, a little bit different from what we've had, uh, reflective of Arlington, um, and I think it will be a, a pretty significant improvement. I brought uh, the initial design. <coughs> Thank you. So our goal is the, the sign. Um, it will, it's made of a, a specific material that won't weather uh, like a traditional wooden sign, um, and it will be hung on um, two granite bollards uh, and attached by a, a wrought iron connection. Um, our goal is to hopefully have these in uh, by the end of the fall uh, and then really uh, start the irrigation and the landscape work at the best time of year to do so, which is the spring. So as the town manager said, um, didn't want anybody to be surprised uh, when you see work happening in all these places, but I think it's going to be a positive uh, improvement for the town. So, thank you. Thank you. Any questions, Mr. Dunn? I'm curious about um, Mass Ave from Cambridge. Was that on the? I'm assuming there's a. You looked at that one. We did look at it, um, and it's part of the scope of the Mass Ave project. Oh, interesting. Uh, um, okay. So that's going to get done through that effort. Okay. Uh, that's why. I mean, that was probably the one in the most immediate need, um, but where it's being taken care of as part of the project, we decided to focus our attention elsewhere. Great, that makes sense. Mr. Byrne? No, thank you uh, very much. And I'm waiting to see, you know, designed by Andrew and Carol as they're kind of on their way out at yeah, this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Is it going to be interesting I memorial? I waving goodbye. <laughs> the signs haven't been manufactured yet. It's not too late. Uh. <laughs> no, thank you very much. This will be a great addition. Thank you. Set. Mr. Manager? Thank you, Madam Chair. So as he talks about Arlington's entrances, I wanted to give the board uh, an opportunity to, to talk about Andrew's exit. So as the board knows, Andrew uh, has been offered and accepted the position of town manager for the town of Andover, That's something that uh, I'm very happy for him. I'm very proud of him. Uh, I think it's an incredible opportunity for him. Uh, but I do also think, on the other hand, it's a, it's a big loss for Arlington. Uh, he's been here for nearly three and a half years. His tenure here has seen the launch of Arlington Visual Budget. Uh, the, town manager's annual financial plan being honored as a GFOA certified uh, award-winning budget, uh, and, and amongst ma many other uh, accomplishments. Um, also, a, a excellent collective bargaining skills, and I, and I think a real improved uh, tenor of collective bargaining since Andrew's uh, been sort of the co-lead with Karen Malloy as, a, as HR director with collective bargaining. So uh, we'll be bidding Andrew farewell at a coffee on October 2nd in the morning. Uh, but this being the last selectman's meeting before Andrew left, I thought I'd give an opportunity for uh, the board to say, say, say anything they'd like and sort of uh, give Andrew an opportunity to just be before the board before he goes to his, his, his next opportunity. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, Mr. Byrne? Um, sure. I, I think that um, 
you know, Andrew has been here more or less, I think since I've been on the board as well, I think we kind of came in at the same time. Someone I have a certainly deep respect for and has really, um, you know, I think brought a lot of facets of kind of our town management, and I mean this with no offense to the town manager, but, but up a level. Um, and I am certainly happy for him as he, <coughs> or Andrew, as you go to <laughs> Andover. Um, but I'm sure um, our paths will cross moving forward through, um, you know, different municipal functions, and um, I wish you the best of luck. So thank you. Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. I also I want to wish you well. Um, I, I think I've appreciated kind of your soft-spoken approach, even under, um, you know, some stressful situations. Um, I appreciated your input at the, um, you know, long-range um, planning uh, meetings where you're, you're asked for innumerable scenarios and financial scenarios and forecasts, and uh, you've always uh, come through and it's really uh, informed our decision making. As well as sticking it out with us every year, um, you know, for a whole Saturday morning on, on our goal setting sessions, I think that your in input has been, uh, you know, invaluable. And uh, I think that uh, Andover's uh, made quite a find, quite a catch. So thank you and good luck. I, I won't repeat some of the things that other people have said, but I will try to channel <coughs> Kevin and say we'd appreciate weekly notes saying which one has the better board of selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> He's still here. <laughs> Good luck. And I should say Mr. Grilly wanted to be here, but unfortunately he had uh, some business that took him out of town. Congratulations, um, Andrew. I want to congratulate the town manager for obviously working with someone who rose to the level that Andover was smart enough to uh, tap your resources. Um, I know they will be missed. I know you've, I think Arlington is a really good testing ground in terms of the opportunities you've had to be acting town manager. Um, and just think you're gonna have that 24 <laughs> seven. Andover's board of selectmen, I know I've certainly put you through the ringer. Um, so I would like to think I also helped mold you. <laughs> Those calls on the off hours on the weekends. And um, just to try to uh, cite a case in point, um, one of your strengths, I think, for me that I really appreciated was, and it was really kind of quiet and, and on the down low, I know recently within the past year, we had gone through a really important hiring um, here in the, in the town of Arlington, and I just had a little bit of trepidation and just, you know, didn't say anything to anybody, and Mr. Flanagan Andrew happened to be here that night, and <coughs> the very next morning he was kind enough, he picked up on that, and I think that's very intuitive, uh, as well as you know, sat down with the meeting, showed me the different um, uh, exercises that the candidates went through and uh, really gave me the opportunity to feel very comfortable, which I was because the people recommending for the position I had pl placed all my trust in and I wasn't involved in the process at all. But um, any two words of advice I would give you is really, God bless you being a town manager and you know they're going to want you 24-7. Um, and uh, Mr. Chaplin's trained you well. And that's one great skill, your intuitiveness. Um, and also acting upon it, not trying to be showboating, but really getting to it and, and acting on it and, and getting it done. And I wish you nothing but good luck, good success. And as Mr. Byrne said, I'm sure our paths will cross in the future. And Mr. Greeley will ask you that question in person. <laughs> anything, Mr. Andrew, you, I keep trying to be formal. Andrew, anything you'd like to say? Thank you um, all so much for uh, your very kind comments. So just about three and a half years ago uh, three, that I stood here with this very board um, and said, and I was serious then and I'm serious today, that Arlington is the type of town that people in our profession of municipal management want to come and work for. Uh, and that has certainly proven to be the case for me uh, as a person, as a professional, uh, to not only serve the residents of this town, but serve the board uh, and be part of um, Adams' administration here in Arlington. You know, what I've taken away from everybody, um, but particularly, uh, Adam is a, a lot of um, great, great tutelage over the years that uh, I think without, I don't know if I'd be in the position I am today uh, to go lead um, Andover. Uh, so thank you all very much. I also want to um, just uh, shout out real quickly to the senior management team, the department heads, and all the staff uh, in Arlington. Uh, they have supported me uh, through everything uh, since I've been here, and uh, they're a great staff, and uh, the town is certainly lucky to have all of them. So thank you very much. Good you. luck. Very happy for you. Okay.
Okay, next we'll have our consent agenda, which is the minutes of the special meeting of August 12, 2015, a request for a contractor drain layer license out of Bill Ricca, a request for a special one-day beer and wine on se September 26 at the Regent Theater for ultrasonic rock <coughs> concert, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 3rd at the Regent Theater for Through the Doors, a celebration of Jim Morrison and the Doors, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 16th at the Smith Museum, 7 Jason Street, for the Arlington Historical Society Wine Reception, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license on October 23rd, my anniversary, at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall Auditorium for the fifth annual Out on the Town Gala, which supports the Arlington Youth Council Counseling Center, as well as we have a request for parking restric restriction waivers on Tufts and Foster Street for the 2015-2016 school year. First, can I get a motion to receive? Move approval subject to all conditions set forth. Moved by Mr. Curo, Second. seconded by Mr. Byrne. Uh, first, for my colleagues, any questions regarding the minutes? No. Uh, is there anyone here from the public to speak to any of the uh, events that I cited for the special one-day beer and li wine license or the contractor drain layer license or the Tufts and Foster Street parking request waivers? If not, any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? It's a unanimous vote. We now are going to go to a public hearing for the request for a theater license, wine and malt, for the Medford Street Theater, Inc., do, doing business as Regent Theater, 7 Medford Street, Leland Stein, and Richard Stavros. Um, are either of those gentlemen here? If you could come to the microphone. You want to just give a brief, or if you don't, it's up to you. <laughs> well, as you know, we've been, uh, for the past three plus years, I believe, uh, you've been so kindly uh, approving the one-day permits up to 30 per year and uh, also the uh, you did approve of uh, the blanket one one year annual uh, beer and wine licenses for the two theaters in Arlington and I know the Capitol Theater has been uh, doing so for quite some time so uh, we are uh, very much looking forward to the opportunity to uh, be able to serve beer and wine and not have to pick and choose and uh, worry about all the um, paperwork and the great expense of the one day permits. And we've certainly had a lot of practice, I think. <laughs> <laughs> As has the office. <laughs> yeah. uh, is there a motion? Move approval, <coughs> subject to conditions. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded Second. by Mr. Kiro. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'm really delighted to support this. I think you, have, you run a wonderful business in our town, and you um, have been do selling, you know, you've been selling this responsibly, as you say, with a lot of different one-day licenses, and I figure your distributors must be really tired of hauling it all in and out of there all the time. Now you only have to haul it in. So yes. I am really glad to see that you're applying for this uh, full-time uh, one day, and I'm happy to support it. Thank you. And I, Mr. Carol, I'm happy also to see you applying for it as you come up on your centennial, so, or centenary, I guess, is, <laughs> look at it, the centennial celebration of the theater, so good luck with this. Further questions, no. comments? I'm happy to support okay, this. Okay, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have a request for a wine and malt license, RJM Inc. doing business as Sugo Cucina Italiana at 162 Mass Ave. Uh, Josephine Menescalco and Rudolph, are either of them here? Thank you. Um, well, we opened about seven weeks ago, and uh, to complement the food, a beer and wine license would fit very well with uh, my concept. Uh, I've been in the business for a long time. Uh, as far as responsibility goes, as far as, as, far as alcohol, I am uh, well versed. Uh, I was certified in tips training, but I need to get recertified, which I will. Uh, my staff will be trained accordingly. Um, I won't be open a uh, late hour. Um, I think it's just something that would uh, enhance my business and the uh, concept that I'm trying to bring to Arlington. Okay, um, Mr. Dunn? Yeah. Uh, so 
I'm happy to support it. I'm gonna just do have one thought of caution and, and sure. advice for you. So we, uh, as you probably know, annually the police department does goes out to all the restaurants and, and package stores and does a sting operation. Mm -hmm. And the ones that fail are inevitably ones that have hired a new employee and do not have a rigorous training program for their okay. new employees. And the number of times that someone has stood at that microphone and said, they started and we we're gonna train them next week, but we didn't get around to it. And so it isn't gonna be that you're serving someone underage next week or the week after. Yeah. It's gonna be in three, I mean, if you, if the mistake happens, it'll be in three years or five years. And so we've had a number of um, restaurants who I think have had a lot more success with a written training program that they go through and they do like, you know, like a, some form of a test with each new employee yes. or something like that. And so I really encourage you to do something like that with your program and then stick to it such that we can only see you at your restaurant and never here. Right, well, <laughs> it's I'm very methodical when it comes to things like that, especially training. Uh, I've been in the business for a long time, and as far as management goes, uh, I had a rigorous training at my previous position. I was a general manager, and it's something that needs to get done and something that will be inherently uh, with every new employee. It, it's, it's detrimental to, to a business if you neglect that sir that uh aspect of any of anything when you're serving alcohol or whether it be malt or or beer uh malt or wine um and it's something that i've been trained for in the past and that's something i'm not going to let let slide um because it's like i said it's detrimental to my business if if it does occur so that's something i won't let thank you excellent um, was that a motion? Uh, move approval subject to all conditions, including tips training. Yes. Second, Second, please. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Um, any further no, discussion? I would just echo Mr. Dunn's sentiments. Sure. Um, my family's in the restaurant business, business chateaus, no Sarah's. Yeah. Um, ideally, and it's not required with your application, um, but what we've seen that Mr. Dunn spoke to is really having a multi-page um, sort of training um, packet that you give to each new employee, right. have them sign it, as well as, depending on how busy you are, at least monthly or once a year at your annual staff meeting. Right. Even the people that have already been, you know this, um, go over it again and sign again. Um, and I know I can hear you're very methodical. So that's the thing when we see people come in, that, right. that, that that's what they didn't have before and they implement. So, But I, I want to wish you good luck. You're in East Thank Arlington you. on Mass Ave. We're almost done down there. Um, it looks pretty good. It's going to look it excellent. Did a great job, by the when way. When it's done, um, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. Subject to conditions? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Good luck. A request for a common victualler and all alcohol license, Shanghai 3 Inc. doing business at Shanghai Village Asian Cuisine. And Andy Lian or someone else? Good evening. Say? My name is Mei Hui Hu. I represent applicant Shanghai 3 Inc. Standing next to me is Andy Liang. He is the uh, pr president and uh, treasurer and um, also holds 40% uh, of the share uh, interest in the new corporation. He's also the proposed manager. So he is TIP certified and he has, uh, we just have a brief, brief discussion just now. He also talked about he would implement procedures to train the staff. Um, he has worked, Mr. Andy Liang has worked in the uh, restaurant industry for over eight years. He, both restaurants that he have worked in uh, are, um, have alcohol license. So he has, even though he has never been a proposed manager for uh, these restaurants, but he has went through Tip training. He has went through staff training where alcohol is served on the premises. So he has plenty of experience. I don't know if okay. um, I should no, that sounds, have um, Mr. Liang. Yep. Mr. Kiro? Yeah, thank you. And thank you for uh, speaking to that, that point. I mean, I don't want to beat a dead horse because I think my colleague already talked about the importance of this. This particular location, we have had at least one previous violation, so it, it, it is important to keep whatever procedures were, were there previously in place um, after that incident, and, and if you could strengthen those, I, I think it's incredibly important. And I think that, um, as my colleague said, you know, a, a written program for your employees, making sure that all new employees who come on 
um, part participate in that I think is very important. So. Motion to approve. So I move subject to approve to subject call conditions set forth. Second, Second by Mr. Byrne. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Good luck, Mr. Leanne. Hope to see you soon. Uh, we'll now go to appointments. Uh, Arlington Cultural Council, we have two, Merle Guerrera and Nilo Muchala. Both one to expire August 31st of 2018 and then Second one, September 30th, 2018. Um, are either of those people here? If you could come up to the microphone, introduce yourselves, and give us a little brief. My name's Nilu Muchala. I've been a resident of Arlington for about seven years. Um, so when I came here, I initially started volunteering in different cultural aspects of the town. I'm a graphic designer by training, and that's where my interest sort of lies. Um, I've branded and helped the International Film Festival. Um, there's been an Arlington Author Salon that was launch launched in the last year. I've helped them with some logo design. Um, and also with Arlington Public Art, of course, like doing a lot of work with Cheerful and um, Art Rocks Monotomy. So um, last year I actually applied for a grant from the Arlington Cultural Council, and I'm a grantee in the year 2015. And my project actually has to do with Arlington. I'm interviewing folks around town from all walks of life, third generation families to youngsters, and transcribing it and doing a couple of installations around town. As a result of my interaction with the Cultural Council, um, they are looking for a couple of new members, so they requested I met with them, and I'm interested in volunteering through that group within the town. And um, that's why I'm here today. Thank you. Mr. Byrne? Um, I'll, I'll certainly move approval, and I don't know how you fit it all in, but <laughs> thank you um, very much for, um, a, as Kevin would say, your willingness to serve. So um, I really look forward to seeing the work that you do. Good luck. Thank you. Mr. Kiro? Hey, thank you very much. Um, as I read through both, both of the, and I'll second the motion, by the way. Um, as I read through both of these applicants' CVs, I've, I've, I've enjoyed their uh, visual art and performing arts uh, ver very much. Um, and I know that uh, uh, our next applicant also brought some great, um, you know, honor on, on, on the town for, for the performance up at the uh, Park Circle Water Tower and, and on yourself. And all I could think when I read these CVs is how are we so fortunate to have this, this caliber of uh, applicant uh, coming to, to serve for us. So. That's all I wanted to say. So thank you for applying, and thank you for your willingness to serve. And with that segue, Merle, <laughs> <laughs> introduce beautiful. yourself. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, hi, I'm Merle Vigera, and I actually haven't been a resident all that long. Um, two weeks after I moved in to Arlington back in 2013, I realized that I lived next to this gorgeous water tower, and I knew I had to do something with it. Mm -hmm. So I jumped into the strangest application that I've probably ever written or the town has ever received. Um, I created a whole bunch of permits that didn't exist before. <laughs> I'm now friends with the Arlington Fire Department, the police department. You, of course, were so helpful as well. Um, so no, we were, we were very, very fortunate to have a project be in a town that was so welcoming of such an interesting uh, collaboration of the community's artwork and video projection and dance and music to put it all together into what was Night at the Tower last year, actually exactly a year ago in 2014. Um, and then earlier this year, we were notified that it was chosen as one of three projects out of 5,000 across the state last year to receive the Gold Star Award from the MCC. So that was really wonderful. Thank you. Well, thank you, honestly. it was. Um, a pleasure to bring it to Arlington. So much work. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if ever you need to write a permit, I will help. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but honestly, it was such a wonderful welcome to the community for myself. And then to have the Arlington Cultural Council approach me about joining them for this three-year <clears throat> term, I couldn't think of anything more that I would want to do beyond being able to be a liaison for the folks that are coming in and say, "Oh, you need a permit? Okay, let me help you with that." <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, move approval. Okay. Uh, Second. Seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? A very unanimous vote. Uh, another appointment to the Cemetery Commission, Brian Hasbrook. Good evening. Hi, I'm Brian Hasbrook. Um, thank you to the board for having me here. Thank you, Mr. Chaplin. Um, so I've been a resident of Arlington for 32 years, and 
Um, I moved to the uh, cemetery neighborhood about uh, five years ago. I'm on Sherborne Street, I'm in the butter. And uh, before that, um, I was active as a volunteer on the Vision 2020 Reservoir Committee, and there was one day around 15 years ago where we took sort of an education walk down all the way down Millbrook to see where it meets the Mystic, the Lower Mystic uh, Lake. And that took us through the cemetery, so that was the first time I saw it, and I really thought, well, this is a really special place, and it completely surprised me because I didn't know it even existed in town. Mm -hmm. um, so since then, I've done other volunteer activities. I'm, I've been on town meeting for, oh, about four, four years now, um, and uh, I've, I've been curious about the cemetery operation. I've been to a couple of uh, meetings of the Cemetery Commission, and I've been very impressed what I've saw with the level of volunteer support that the commission gives the town. Um, so when the uh, vacancy arose, I thought, well, maybe I can make some contribution uh, as well. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm here tonight. Thank you. Move approval. Move approval by Mr. Burns, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Mr. Dunn. Uh, thank you for joining and thank you for your willingness to serve. The Seminary Commission ends up being a ground, is going to be the, at the pointy end of one of those difficult decisions we've got coming up because we are running out of room for the, as you know, I'm sure, for uh, traditional burials. And the land to fix that is not, you know, cheap. And so we're going to need to come up with creative solutions that are also palatable to town meeting, as you, you also know has been a challenge. So I, I definitely wish you luck and offer your, you know, our support in creative solutions that uh, to, you know, manage the space problem that we've got coming up. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that advice, and I agree. And I'm I have a lot to learn about the history of uh, the cemetery and that particular problem. But I'll, I'll be thinking a lot about that. Okay. Uh, any further questions on a motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Again, a very unanimous vote. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Uh, the next agenda item, um, I know the chairman really wanted to be here. He worked um, heavily with the town manager and the committee um, on this. Um, and I'm not going to be able to impart any of his wisdom and knowledge that he gained along the way. I'm going to let the town manager do this, but this is for approval, <coughs> board, board appointments to the CPA, CPC, Community Preservation Committee. Mr. Chapterling. Thank you, Madam Chair. So as the board knows, uh, we are establishing uh, as a town the first Community Preservation Committee uh, now. And uh, after passage this spring at town meeting, the board has four at-large appointments to this committee. Uh, so the process we followed uh, was to solicit applications, uh, of which I believe we actually, I had been using the wrong number, we'd received 21 applications. This board appointed a five-member screening committee with each board member appointing one of those members. Uh, using a number of criteria, uh, town experience, financial experience, other areas uh, relative to the Community Preservation Act, uh, that screening committee narrowed those original applicants down to nine applicants. Uh, those nine were then interviewed via phone, excuse my, uh, my cold, uh, for 15 <coughs> minutes each by uh, Chairman Greeley and I. And I, I would say from the original pool down to the pool of nine, uh, this was probably the toughest choice uh, that I've had to make in terms of volunteers who want to serve and telling excellent volunteers no. Uh, you know, we, we have other people whose service uh, that we, we want. Uh, and, and I think that's just a testament to, to Arlington as a whole, but also to the people who applied and showed interest in this. Uh, so before you tonight are uh, the chairman and I's recommendations to you for consideration for appointment. So you have in the memo before you Clarissa Rowe, David Levy, Eric Helmuth, and Andrew Bankston. Excuse me. Uh, what is not contained in the memo is recommended uh, term length. Yes. Uh, what we're recommending is Clarissa Rowe for the one-year term, Eric Helmuth and Andrew Bankston for the two-year terms, and David Levy for the three-year term. I believe all four of the candidates are here tonight, and mm -hmm. I, I know this is a big decision for the board, but uh, speaking for myself, and as much as I can speak for the uh, Chairman Greeley, uh, we very much hope the board will approve our recommendations. Okay. If I could, I do see the four individuals here. Um, if you could come up and we all know you um, <laughs> because you're certainly very involved with the town, but for everybody watching at home and whatever you'd like to impart in terms of um, your service on the CPC or advice to the rest of us that are going to... For some reason, they elected to have me come first. <laughs> Shocking. Um, 
the I think the Community Preservation Act is a wonderful addition to the town. I think it's <coughs> going to help um, take care of some needs in town with affordable housing, historic preservation, and open space and recreation that I won't say not all of them have been underfunded, but they have been somewhat underfunded. Um, from my personal um, view, I have been working on this since the 1990s statewide, and I'm really happy that my own town has finally elected to be part of this group, and I'm very excited. I, I'm looking forward to being, a, being on this committee. I'm going to retire from a couple of other committees, so I can just focus on this one mm -hmm. um, for one year, as Adam said. <laughs> but, and I guess one, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I think it's a tremendous opportunity, and I'm really happy that the three gentlemen behind me are also serving with me, because I think we can work very cooperatively. Thank you, Ms. Rojo, our former and still current colleague in our hearts. <laughs> Hello, Eric Helmuth, Precinct 12. So I was really inspired by the voters' decision to make an investment, because I think that's what the CPA fundamentally is, and it's a different kind of investment. Um, as Clarissa said, it's an investment in things that, for the long term, make Arlington a great place to live and will continue to make, a, make it a great place to live, but that are difficult to fund in the short term. And the fact that the uh, citizens, the voters, the taxpayers, decided to, to do that, I think, was insp inspiring to me and inspired me to want to serve, primarily to listen and to learn, um, which sounds a little Pollyannish, but I think that's what the CPC needs to do, to really listen to what the needs are, what those longer-term needs are, with the sensitivity to what the short-term financial practicalities are and find a way to, to merge the two in a way that respects the integrity of the intent of the CPC and what we need to do to be fiscally responsible. So I think it's a fascinating challenge. I look forward to learning a great deal from the other committee members who have deep expertise in each of these three areas and um, appreciate it. Hello again. Um, I'm David Levy, as you know. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve the town again. It's been a little while for me uh, running the Housing Corporation of Arlington for almost nine years and serving on town meeting and the Historic Districts Commission and other committees. And um, I took a little break to start my own business, which um, has been fascinating. Um, and I'm, uh, when I heard about this opportunity um, and my wife told me to do it, I decided to Yay. put my name in the hat. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but I am, I'm really looking forward to it. This is an important fund. Um, I know it well from my work in affordable housing. Um, these are three separate areas that are underfunded in general. So I really see our role is to advise the town manager and you on how we think this money should be allocated and, you know, take that quite seriously. So thanks for um, the vote of confidence and I'm looking forward to it. Glad you're back. Yeah, thank you. I'm Andrew Bankson, uh, town meeting member for a couple of years now. Uh, my wife and I have moved here about nine years ago and uh, enjoyed uh, living here and have been um, taking on uh, more volunteer roles and see this as the next uh, step. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm an architect with about 18 years of experience. so. I see my role as um, kind of digging into some of the technical aspects of some of these projects and uh, being able to advise on, on that. Um, thanks for the opportunity. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunn? Uh, I'm gonna move approval. I'm gonna say thank you all. You all have fantastic qualifications, as has been said before, and you all have a lot to offer the committee, and I really appreciate the fact that you are willing to put forward the time on that. Uh, to, uh, I, will, my, my, I do have some thoughts as to how the, the money uh, should be allocated, which uh, I know <laughs> that uh, Clarissa and Eric have heard at point blank range upwards of 15 times, or David and Andrew, you may have only heard zero to five times and maybe a little bit of a distance. Uh, but it, I think it is really important that the CPA be used very carefully in orchestration with our larger financial plan because we have, uh, this, as 
as easy uh, relatively as the budgets have been the last couple of years. They are not always going to be like that because we have a structural imbalance and we are going to need another override. And one of the only ways we're going to get that override and maintain the services that we all know and love is if we make the case that we're spending it on what we should be. And uh, the CPA is going to be held up to that scrutiny just like everything else. And so I, uh, I encourage you to keep that in mind as you make your wise decisions. Mr. Byrne, was that a second? Um, I, I will certainly second it, and um, um, thank you all very much uh, again. I know um, I, I don't know if I'll, I'll go the direction Dan went with that, but I, I certainly appreciate um, I certainly appreciate his comments and, and, and deeply respect them. But I, I think what I want to uh, really point out is the process that kind of everyone went through to be on this committee, and I, I think that from I, I th of course, we did. A, we picked out um, the people who the selection committee, and I think we really um, picked out a committee that worked well together and did come up with a um, obje objective process that got the right people for the job. And I think uh, Kevin and Adam deserve a lot of credit for that as well. But of course, you um, for for you know being willing to go through it, which I know isn't always easy for. Um, you know, a volunteer role. So thank you very much, and uh, that means a lot to me. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? Th thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, once again, this is another situation where I just looked at the candidate pool and I said, wow, are we, we fortunate. There was such a rich candidate pool overall, and uh, you all kind of represent the cream that rose to the top, but, but uh, uh, so many talented people came forward. And I think we all kind of know you, although when I read your your resume is I realized I didn't really know you and everything that you've you've uh, accomplished uh, professionally and um, in your volunteer life and what I want to um, really thank the manager and the chair and the, the um, committee for is I think um, most people know that there are three main programmatic areas that the that the Community Preservation Act um, is designed to assist it's historic preservation open space and recreation um, as, as well as affordable housing, and I'm very impressed that the that the recommendations that came forward to us really represent deep expertise in each of those three areas, as well as the fact that every one of you does or has served on on town meeting because it's going to be very important that that all of the recommendations the committee bring forward are recommendations that that can also pass you know town meeting muster and reflect the. Um, the priorities of the, the, the community. Um, I think it was a great um, a great um, event when the, the voters passed this this uh, act. I know that a number of you worked very hard on it. I mean, Ms. Rowe is kind of the fairy godmother of the CPA in Arlington and Massachusetts, but... Um, Before you give her a wand, please. <laughs> <laughs> But I, I think in, in talking to folks, I mean, I think even some who were skeptical and, and you know, opposed it at that, that time have recognized that it can be an important tool in our financial planning as well as meeting some programmatic needs. So I have great confidence in, in, um, in the work that you'll do with the other um, five um, statutory uh, appointees to the, to the CPA. So thank you. I want to say thank you to Clarissa Eric. <clears throat> David and Andrew, um, I know you're smart enough to know what you're about, the journey you're about to embark <laughs> upon. Um, I know, similar to Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, you're probably going to get tenfold really worthy, possibly eligible projects. Um, <coughs> and we're not going to be able to do them all. I know I'll probably be one of the worst offenders <laughs> in terms of um, that process. Uh, I'm going to leave it to you and the rest of the committee, along uh, with the town manager and whoever you avail yourself to, to define what that process is in terms of um, you know, people who, I know when I went out along with you all and we're, we're selling the CPA and asking people to raise their taxes, one attractive thing was the matching grant, the matching funds from the state that Ms. Rowe was, I'm going to say, the architect of. Um, but as well as when people heard what they could be applied to. And I was very careful to say this could be done, you know, right now under this. Um, so I think that's going to be really a, as you know, f first important step in so, sort of defining 
how people should find out about CPC, what's the best way, because you're going to have a lot of information on your plate. And you may have already started to think about that. Um, like what you would say to me versus me calling you each four individually to say, I want to talk to you about these five projects. You know, will there be a public meeting? Will there be a brochure? Something like that. So however you all define the process that works best for you. But I know a lot of people are really excited about this. And sort of one of the things I want to pass on to Ms. Rowe, Clarissa, um, and I think we discussed this. I have spoken to three very strong uh, individuals who, who are vociferously opposed um, to CPA and they now are espousing to me how important it is and how it should be applied um, here in the town of Arlington um, as well as gave their very strong opinions on it which I listened to because uh, I think that's what a great job that's been done on this and will continue to be done on it. Um, anything you'd like to add um, Mr. Manager? <coughs> nope, nothing beyond what the board is added. All right. Um, we have a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Thank you. Oh, more. yes, Ms. Rowe. I, I think I just want to reiterate two things. One, as Dan knows, the, the um, bylaw that was passed at town meeting asked that we would have some um, oversight by the capital planning committee and also by the selectmen and the finance committee, and we welcome that. Um, but as Eric said, I think certainly the first year is a year of listening. And the public having public meetings, um, real outreach, doing some inventory work really makes a lot of sense. The Community Preservation Coalition will actually come to town and give us for free a training session, which I think would be really great. And then also if the Capital Planning Committee and the Finance Committee and the select people want to come to that, training, I think it would be a great idea. Um, and I think the other thing for people that are interested, go to communitypreservation.org. There's a tremendous website that gives you projects from all over the Commonwealth um, for the last 15 years and projects that it'll show you what's eligible in the different um, uses. And one of the best ways the act is used is when it combines uses. So it's open space and affordable housing. And you know that's, that's the kind of thing. So thank you very much. We really appreciate your um, confidence in that. Thank you. Mr. Chaplin? Uh, town Council reminded me the bylaw actually uh, requires me to vote <laughs> as oh, part of this, okay. too. Uh, so I. Uh, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, in the interest of, uh, I'd like to retake that vote uh, yes. made by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, on behalf of the f four members of the Board of Selectmen and the town manager. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote, Mr. Chairman. And then the other point I neglected to mention was myself and Chairman Gre uh, Greeley will facilitate calling the first meeting uh, of the Community Preservation Committee. We'll pool everybody's dates. Uh, set up an organizational meeting and then the committee can figure out what day is best for the committee members to meet and set a schedule going forward for the rest of the fall and weekend. Can I ask just a quick question? If you don't have a quick answer, we can. The other members of the CPC, uh, are they designated, soon to be designated, or are we waiting? Some have been, some should be very soon. Do we have a deadline date or no? We're just going to wait to tonight. No, I haven't tonight. said a deadline, but it's about time that we. Okay. Do so you can. Let we us actually set a deadline, I believe. It was like <laughs> end days after. Uh, the, the attorney general the AG approved it yeah. and i don't know what day the ag that approved was for it. us though is that for the all five I, yeah i thought that was, was just for our purposes but i'll leave it to you to sort of you know and work with our four members to say you know what should be a deadline you know barring any emergency circumstances but um like to get you guys have a lot of work okay um mr curo sorry to, to mr dunn's point has, has the ag approved it yes they have we're all set okay okay Thanks. awesome Thank you very much. I know we'll be seeing a lot of you. And I'd be interested in that training. If I can make it, I'll be there. Thank you so much. <coughs> uh, next, we have uh, agenda item 17, a request for a food vendor license, YRCH, doing business as Fenway Market. Yubaraj, wait, Yubaraj Shalegian. I did my best. I, you now, you say it correctly, so I. Good evening. Uh, my name is Yubaraj Shalegian. Uh, I'm trying to run the business that already, you know, running in the 203 Broadway. This is a small convenience store. And I'm in this business for the last five years. And I would love to run that business 
so I request for the food vendor license for that one. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Dunn? I've got a, so can you tell me, uh, so have you worked at, you've been working at this particular location or you're involved? No, not, not the particular location. I have a, another business in Somerville. Yeah. So I used to work in Arlington too in uh, mass convenience. And so did you have a relationship with the previous owner that you would worked with them before or was it just like it went, the business went on the market and you obtained it or can you tell me more about the transaction? Uh, this uh, business, uh, I don't, you know, I did not know the owner. So I stopped by one day and he, re I think he recently bought that business and he was not uh, like the really, you know, interested to run that business. So I asked him if I was interested for that business before he purchased that one. And he told me, if you want, you can, you know, buy it. So I, re you know, I just requested him. I, I would love to run this business. I love Arlington town. I have one business in Somerville, but I love this town too. So I used to work in uh, mass convenience in 245 mass app mm -hmm. more than four or five years. Okay. So that's, that's what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Move approval subject to conditions. Moved by Mr. Dunn, Second. seconded by Mr. Caro. Um, any questions? Mr. Barr? I don't have any questions, but I, I do appreciate you wanting to come here that you just popped into a store and you know offered to buy it essentially. So I think that's pretty cool. So I wish thank you the you best sir. of luck. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I would just say, you know, similar to quite a number of businesses in Arlington, you are in a residential area. Um, and I know you're a smart businessman and you also know the tenor of Arlington. Um, just finding that balance of, you know, deliveries and pickups as well. You sure. know, under the bylaws in terms of what time that can happen to, and I know you'll be a good neighbor even though you're a business you're also going to be a neighbor so I want to wish you good luck thank you so much um, on a motion by Mr. Dunn seconded by Mr. Caro any further questions if not all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. all those opposed thank you unanimous thank vote much. good luck we have a request for a common victor license Han Kaya Inc doing br business as Brickstone Cafe Vedros Kaya hey, good evening well, I'm Bedros Kaya. My wife and I are, have been making pizzas for over 20 years, 25 years. Um, we, were, we have been looking for a pizza shop because the, um, the store that we, what we had uh, in Burlington, got, um, the building got sold and we found this place here. We have a um, high-tech wood-fired brick oven that we want to bring in here. Okay. <laughs> Uh, start. Motion, move approval. Move approval. By Mr. Byrne. Is there a second? A second. Mr. Kiro. Um, Mr. Kiro. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it, it is a, a, a new twist, and I, I'm looking forward to the opening of your business. I did want to um, note for the record that um, the board did today receive some um, written correspondence about the proposal asking that we um, remind you um, uh, about issues around parking and unloading. There, there have in the past been issues with parking and unloading on Alton Street and in the fire lanes in that area. That's it, right. it is very important that you that you uh, unload behind your business rather than out on, yeah, on I, Alton. I've been, I've been noticing that uh, there are businesses in the same block. Yeah, so, so it's very important. I'm well aware of that. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Dunn? I think the other aspect of that has been uh, the, the time that the deliveries come and, right. and the noise associated with it, because that so definitely is a place where the commercial district and the residential district are you know, separated by 18 feet or something like that. And there's definitely some friction there. Yes. So I think uh, some, some sensitivity and some communication on the part of the businesses there will help the situation in the long run. So uh, yes. you definitely, I think you've got some frustrated residents on that street, <coughs> so you've got a little bit of uh, repairing of perhaps of relationships there. Not that it's your fault, but it's the situation that you're arriving in. And so I think that the more you do to reach out to those neighbors and welcome, you know, you know see what you can do to make them feel better, I think would be, uh, it'll earn you dividends in the long run. I understand that, thank you. Awesome, okay. Uh, motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Good luck, good luck to you. There's the 
<laughs> brains behind the brawn. Um, we now have Citizens Open Forum. Um, I don't know if anyone has signed in, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request um, and Mrs. Kropelka. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Radosha, a stranger to us all? No? <laughs> Yeah, okay, yeah. Town meeting member, ate uh, some other stuff and all of that. Um, <laughs> if uh, I'm a little ahead of your schedule, because I know item 21, I don't know how much of a discussion, but perhaps if I, after that discussion, a lot of my concerns might have been addressed, I don't know. So if you want, I'll just go ahead with it now and waste your time with it here. Um, but let me start by saying, I'm having trouble understanding how this, uh, these changes improve uh, the current parking availability. Uh, I don't see any changes. Uh, the only thing I see here is, and I think it's a good thing, that the town's going to bring in a substantial revenue from it all. And uh, that's important. I, I kind of go along with that. Um, but it doesn't seem to help, for example, our director of economic development in terms of trying to fulfill or fill up those nine vacant uh, storefronts that are along Mass Ave between here and the fire station. Uh, he's having trouble with that. And I don't see where this might be an incentive for him to go on with it. Um, and then the, the stated goal of promoting turnover space in the business area, uh, that's somewhat in conflict with the plan to do away with the metered parking space in the Russell lot. Right. Uh, that's, I've been beating up on that one for several years in terms of the metered and the parking spaces. It's never been enforced. And I think it's an important thing. For example, this morning I went down there and I took some pictures of what I saw down there. And out of the 100 metered spaces, 15 were vacant and 42 were filled with cars with permit stickers on them. And I got some photos here if you want them and you can have them, whatever. Mm -hmm. But what, what I found was, here is the entrance from AC and down this, this whole, this area right through here was primarily filled with stickered cars. Now, that's the space that's close to accessing the businesses and so forth. That's the friendly space. And by now opening it up to anyone, you're now restricting it. And by encouraging employees to have their people to buy permanent stickers, this will all be filled up before anybody gets down there at 10 o'clock in the morning to do any business during a normal period, not the summers, but during the regular season. So. Um, I, I think it's going backwards doing that. Um, the other thing is the four hour limit on the street meters. Um, that's, that's just going to allow workers to now to only go out once a day to put, fill the meter as opposed to two or three times a day to move the cars. Because <coughs> um, I, I see that, and I think you all can see that in town. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure why we stopped the street meters at Academy Street. Uh, Chase and Mill Street seem like a more logical kind of place to do it. That's the end of a line. It's not in between things. There are 19 spaces out there uh, with a potential of about $1,300 in revenue a week. And, uh, and the other thing is, uh, this is more of a question, how many more traffic Sorry. enforcement Officers, we're going to have to hire to collect the money and spread out and do more diligence in terms of uh, what's going on. I, I, I only see two in the center right now. There may be three, but now we're talking six days, 12 hours. Uh, that's not a two man, no, two person operation, I don't uh -huh. think. So I don't know what the answer to that is. I'm sure you might have it. Maybe it'll come up when you yeah, discuss I think, it. Yeah, um, that, I think that we. That I mean, would be, a, say for, that will be a part of our discussion yeah. Yeah. Um, under. Okay. 21 All right, thank you, All Mr. Right. Rodosha. So, I'll that get the answers. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, anybody else here for Citizens Open Forum? If not, and as Mr. Burns stated, just to keep continuity of the agenda, um, Citizens Open Forum 
um, as I stated in the preamble, um, except for emergency circumstances, we don't respond. But since it is an agenda item, I'm um, sure we'll have responses to that as we get to it. Uh, <coughs> item 19 for approval, handicap parking sign request, Deborah Keeley for William Haxton at 15 Pierce Street. Is Ms. Keeley or Mr. Haxton here? She couldn't come, Daniel. She, she couldn't come. Move approval. Move approval Second. by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Curo. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Next, we have presentation, East Arlington Public Art Project. Um, Cecily Miller, but I would like to first turn it over to our town manager, Mr. Chapterlane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as the board uh, recalls at town meeting this year, uh, town meeting approves funding uh, of a consultant to start a public process to uh, bring public art to the Mass Ave Corridor project in East Arlington. Uh, so working with Arlington Public Art and Adria Arch uh, and Lori and Jane uh, and, and others, we uh, solicited three uh, proposals uh, from consultants who do public art work such as this. Uh, and after uh, reviewing them with a group from uh, APA, uh, we selected uh, Cecily Miller to do the work. Uh, so Cecily's come on board and has a timeline and a proposed process to do community outreach, outreach to the business community, uh, public meetings, uh, uh, maybe even some uh, pop-up art to get people to understand the concept of, uh, of public art in the corridor. But before we kick that off, this is sort of a precursor to the kickoff to allow the board to understand the process that's going to be rolled out and ask any questions and give any feedback that the board might have. So with that, uh, with the chairwoman's discretion, I would turn it over to Cecily. Yep, if she if that's okay with my colleagues. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi. First of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for supporting this project. I, I'm, uh, I feel I'm really honored to have been selected to help guide the, the town through this initiative. Um, and this is the first uh, uh, public announcement of, of the plan to do a project in East Arlington. Um, and we're in the very, very initial phases, so it's a little, uh, little odd to be talking about it because we don't yet know what it's going to be. Um, we're hoping to engage artists in doing things that are um, a surprise, that uh, indicate that they've listened to the town through an extensive public process, but. Um, they come up with something creative and unexpected and, and new um, that will reflect the history and character and distinctive qualities of the neighborhood of East Arlington. Um, I think you've got uh, already an impressive track record of doing things here and um, just my first conversations with people in the Arlington Public Art Group, uh, at the library, meeting Adam, I feel not only honored but really excited about working in a community that has such a, a positive um, spirit and has already accomplished so much. Um, I wasn't sure whether I should go through the whole timeline because it's been passed out in paper. I more wanted to, to sort of share with you a story from my experience in Somerville when I was at the Somerville Arts Council because as I say, we really don't know yet what this project is going to be. It, it could end up being, um, you know, a, a constellation of lights that hang over the uh, over Mass Avenue. It could end up being um, uh, some kind of sculpted treatment of the poles for the parking meters. It could end up being um, oral history stories somehow inscribed in. On the, on, the, on the ground. We really don't know. We just know that we want it to be about this place and this time and this community, about its hopes and aspirations in some way. And we'd like it to involve community participation. If possible, uh, community members may even be able to have, to participate in making whatever ends up in, 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 in East Arlington. So just as an example, um, one of the public art projects that I worked on in Somerville was a memorial for the Korean War, for the Korean War. And um, the very first meeting, a group of Korean War veterans came in and they had photos of memorials from various towns. And they threw their photos down on the table and they were like, we want a, 
a base like this, a, this uniform, but the person in this uniform would never be carrying this tool, so we want to make sure that they're carrying the correct tool. And, you know, they had it all sort of designed in their head exactly what they wanted. Um, in the end, they talked a lot about their experiences with the war, their memories, and an artist transformed this into, an artist named Ted Clausen, um, transformed this into a timeline about the war that uh, really laid out its chronology and um, oral history uh, statements so that the commemoration of the war was in these veterans' own words, a series of small evocative objects that the veterans could have actually held during their service, like like a trench digging tool. And, um, and what the veteran said was, this is so amazing. We would never have thought of this. You know, I knew it was a success because they said, I would, we would never have thought of this, but it says exactly what we would want it to say. So that's, that's what we're, we're hoping um, to achieve here to create something that people find familiar in some way because it's um, about the challenges and pleasures of being here, but also surprising and unexpected. Uh, is there a motion? I move approval. Mr. Kiro, seconded by Second. Mr. Dunn. Um, any comments, questions, Mr. Kiro? Thank you very much, and thank you for your work on this proposal. I, I really appreciate that you uh, provide us with some options and, and, um, and, and the way that you broke down the budget. Um, I think that this is um, you know, very important. I think you, know, you may know that you know, that part of Arlington has gone through kind of tumultuous debates over the last few years about some of the, the, the future and the vision as we've reconstructed Mass Ave, which is our main corridor through there. Um, we're seeing something of a, of, a, of a renaissance now between there, brand new school. Uh, a bunch of us are gonna be attending a meeting on Thursday where we're gonna talk about demographic changes in, in the town. We're seeing an explosion of, um, you know, kind of an influx of people into, into the town, and I think that the way that you just described the project in Somerville provides one example of, of a wonderful way that, that um, public art projects could really bridge kind of the history and tradition of, of the, those neighborhoods with some of the new energy also that, that's being, being uh, brought to bear. Um, one way in which um, this will be particularly important is that um, you, you may or may not be aware that the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture is working on a cultural district proposal mm -hmm. um, yeah, for, the, for the state right now. And it's been decided to, to try to pursue maybe a slightly larger than normal um, cultural district that would encompass both the center and East Arlington. Mm -hmm. But of course you need some kind of continuity to, to tie those two parts of town together. And as the um, the volunteers have been working, they've worked a bit with Mr. Fields as, as well on a map for the application that, that will go in on this. There have been some holes in there and, and um, the proposal to, to kind of institute some new public art projects along um, Mass Ave in that area really has filled those, those gaps, I think, in the proposal and is gonna help to make it a successful proposal. So this is incredibly important on, on so many, um, uh, levels, I think. So, um, you know, I don't know what your thoughts are about about how this will uh, kind of uh, help us to tie together the, the, the two parts. I know this is focused on East Arlington, but your thoughts on kind of tying together um, two important parts of town through this initiative. Yeah, well, that actually already did come up in one of our conversations, um, <coughs> the possibility that this public art intervention, shall we say, um, could connect, could connect the main center and, and East Arlington, and how could it do that? So what we'll do is have a lot of conversations like this, where people yeah. say, this could be a goal a, a, you know, a, a very significant accomplishment if the, if the public art project could do this, if it could, um, you know, knit these two areas together, connect them together by 
well, we won't say by what means, but by sure. some, some means. And then that's a problem there that an artist can work on and can think about. And it's sort of grist for the mill. Um, so I think that will definitely go. Our, the process is that we hold a, um, public meetings where people give us, share these kinds of ideas and thoughts and goals. Um, we convene a, a community advisory group and continue those discussions with that group. We compile all of this information and we make it available to a number of artists, <coughs> three is a typical number, and ask them to develop proposals. Mm -hmm. And then we select from those proposals. So that would be a prime objective to put in that document for an artist to think about. Um, another might be how to get the town of Arlington to recycle more. Another might be how to give the kids in the local schools a presence in the commercial district. You know, it'll, these are the kinds of things that, the kinds of ideas that we encourage people to come forward with, as well as just sharing their, you know, their thoughts about how they like spending time in this area and what they remember about it and more casual kinds of things. Because e even, uh, there was another project that I worked on where it was in Union Square and what people in Union Square talked about was this has always been a place that people kind of would hang out. Back, going back to the Union Army when it was a Union recruitment center. And so from that, the artist ended up making these very playful, conversational benches that, that formed a kind of outdoor living room so that people could indeed you know, gather and talk and fall into conversation with, with strangers in this space. And it was, this was just a, a quality that showed up in what a number of different people said about the area if that makes sense. Right. It yeah. does. Thank Excellent. you very much. Okay. Anything further? Um, very good choice, Mr. Town Manager and whoever else participated in it. I'm, I'm really excited. I'm ready to sit down and throw five ideas at you. So um, <laughs> uh, I think that Arlington will be well served by you and your expertise on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those Thank opposed? You. Unanimous aye. vote. Uh, and since we're on television? Mm -hmm. Can I just mention that we are planning a first meeting on November 4th mm -hmm. um, that will be at the main branch of the public library, um, 7 o'clock, and we'd love for people to come to that. That's just a, an open meeting. And um, the True Story Theater is going to um, moderate part of that, so that should be a fun, make it a fun um, kind of version of a public meeting. So all are welcome. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, agenda item 21, if I could turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Byrne. You certainly can. Thank you very much, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Chairwoman. Um, so, as I'm sure you've noticed, we've been, uh, the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee has kind of been coming forward at the last few meetings, um, implementing some, or asking your approval for um, kind of everything that we've been working on. And, you know, we did find that. Uh, at this time, we're kind of ready to bring a slew of recommendations um, to you, kind of about um, basically that shows what the center is going to look like um, moving forward. Um, and I, I'll definitely have to start by commending everyone who served on the committee. Um, Leland's here from the region. He represented the merchants, um, of course, the town manager. And um, there's a really great team that, that was quite dedicated. And I know we all serve on different committees, but to um, be willing to show up to town hall at eight o'clock uh, throughout the summer a few times a month is um, certainly not, um, not regular for committees and I, I was quite happy um, with their dedication. Um, I guess I'll start by um, addressing some of, um, some of Bob's comments, um, uh, particularly where um, the, the main goal of this is to um, kind of increase the availability of parking on Mass Ave. And I think um, where I understand that Bob doesn't um, potentially, or so, and some others uh, might not see why um, this will increase turnover, um, I, I think it does, um, what we're hoping on and what you know, other towns have seen is it, it does come down to economics. When you start charging um, people um, less to go into lots, um, that's where they'll go, and particularly for um, long-term parkers during the day. That's, um, 
that, that's certainly where, where they belong, um, quite frankly. That we, um, we can't afford to have um, people, you know, or individuals kind of taking up um, the spots on Mass Ave that are really crucial to all the businesses there. And, and I think that this strategy does work. And, and as, as you, if you look across kind of, you know, the Commonwealth, I think you'll see quite a few municipalities who are kind of moving to this, um, this type of parking structure. And it's one that that I do think will serve the town well, and I and I hope that you um, will join me in supporting this. Um, I am very happy to report that the meters are out of the lot, and I'm sure everyone's seen that. We're we're out on Saturday, and uh, that that's all obviously a great thing for for everyone, and there will be quite a few less headaches um, <coughs> moving forward now. Um, and, and we're still as I think Adam's uh, memo really did a great job uh, laying out everything that is has happened and is going to happen. Um, but, but that was certainly one in the victory column. Um, so I guess with that, uh, I think everyone, I, I know that this memo has been out. And unless Adam has anything he'd like to add, I'd, I'd kind of be happy to open up to questions or concerns and, and, and go about it that way. Because I could probably keep talking about this, but I feel like it might be going in circles. We so probably talk about it all summer yes, long. Exactly. Uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, before it, I If I may, the, the only other point that Mr. Radosha raised that I think was <coughs> um, worth trying to clarify was uh, part of the recommendations or, or the, um, the memo talked about no longer defining permit spaces in the Russell Common Lot versus metered spaces. Uh, and though uh, there, there may be uh, some validity to the point Mr. Radosha made about when people arrive and where they park, uh, we did feel that uh, with the committee members' feedback that the ambiguity uh, that would occur during uh, after hours parking or, or, or nighttime, evening parking, uh, where people would come in, they want to go to the Regent Theater, they want to go to dinner, they see permit parking only, they're not sure where they can park, uh, that alleviating that ambiguity would be a, a sort of a, a, a beats-all benefit. Uh, and it, if it doesn't work, the, the beauty of this governance structure that the board has set up is we can change it. Uh, n nothing's permanent. We're going to be monitoring. We, we want to get this right. Uh, we're, we're not just, you know, stamping it and walking yeah. away. So if, if there's if there's issues, yeah, we're we'll happy. fix it. And I, I guess I will just add um, two things. I think um, two places that we had quite a lot of discussion on was uh, one being loading zones. And I know um, uh, Leland was a, a great voice in that, and we. Um, we worked on this for a long time. I think at one of the first meetings we had a map out and we were, you know, looking in the median strip of could we possibly put a loading zone in there and uh, at this point in time we, um, we're we not going to um, recommend one but again it is something that, that we'll move forward and kind of see if anything changes but we're really hoping to work with the different vendors and, you know, I, I think that as the memo says, Starbucks has been um, kind of Difficult with air loading, so we're um, going to try to try to work with them to come up to a, um, a resolution on that level, as opposed to make any recommendations um, through this report. And, and the other was, of course, taxis, which we've spoke about here before. Um, we've uh, reached a compromise that the group agreed on, where we would move uh, redirect two of the taxi um, spots into the lot and then continue to have two on Mass Ave. So the two on Medford Street, and we'll be moving those into the Russell Common Lot, and we'll be leaving the two on Mass Ave. So thank you. Mr. Kiro. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the work on, on this. I know it's been a long haul. I think you described the, the demand management really well, um, and I have a lot of hope that, that that's going to help alleviate some of the issues that we've that we've had because as we I think Nelson Nygaard really demonstrated we don't really have a supply problem for the most part in some some sometimes we do but in general we don't have a supply but we actually have a demand problem and redistributing those cars into the into the lot um, during the day in particular is very um, important I did have a couple of questions um, on on this um, I fully support the, the, the proposal to, to move the, the two taxi stands into the Russell Commons lot. It's not designated in the memo, though, as to where those would be. Is it anticipated that they would be in spots that are close to Medford Street on that side of the, the lot so that they're not too far off from the theater and from, from other 
Yeah, but we, we ended up with spots facing the, the housing uh, in the Russell Common, the, right, the two spots closest to Dormer Way over towards the Regent Theater. Oh, towards the theater. Oh, so they're somewhat visible even from, from, from Medford Street. Okay, great. Um, I noticed that you, um, okay, so you've, I, I'll admit I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that we're going with pay, pay uh, with uh, pay and display because I think it is tough. Why I, I understand why because of the the cost. Um, I just I think it's tough for um, especially older folks who have to go and walk to the walk to the machine and walk back several several times. So I did note though that that the machines that we've purchased have the ability to do pay. Um, What's it called? Pay by space. Yeah, and, and you know, I think um, we, that that was also a um, a pretty big discussion that the group had. And, and and correct me if I'm wrong, Adam, but it, it really was an infrastructure discussion on yeah. you know, we can kind of we 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 have pain display now, and we, we can um, you know it just seemed to make sense um, so we could kind of get this going um, yeah. as opposed to you know um, sure. redoing the lot or putting in new poles, um, et cetera. Do the machines support the ability to punch in your license plate? Yes, they, they do. do. But we weren't going to, we, the plan wasn't to activate that right away. That yeah, correct? so we, uh, may I? Yeah. Uh, we, we, we did have a lot of talk between the three options, pay by uh, pay and display, pay by space, or pay by plate. And wh where we came down was, of all the complaints we get about the existing meters, pay and display wasn't at the top of the list. Perhaps right. there's <laughs> reasons that for that. The meters but, stunk. Uh, yeah. we, we, you know, I... I came into the discussion thinking that pay by space was the way to go. Uh, but after talking about it with Mike Rademacher and DPW, the sort of northeast winter realities of managing that and making sure that you plowed out anything that you painted on the ground, had to repaint it every year, yeah. possibly put signs on the ground that you wouldn't plow up against. Start, you, you really start to think about how manageable it is in a lot of that size. Yeah. So I sort of led an argument against that. <coughs> In pay by plate, we talked a lot about it, it. Maybe we could think about it in the future, but we did start to think that people would also get frustrated that they'd go to the machine, not know it was pay by plate, and have to walk not back to their car, this. not yeah. know their plate, and that there was some. And, and we did receive there. correspondence um, from residents um, saying okay. that they did not like West Medford's um, strategy, which is put in your parking lot, uh, put in your license plate. license plate. Yes. Gotcha. Um, got, got, gotcha. I, I can imagine objections on a number of levels. Everybody's thinking their head. What is my license plate? <laughs> yeah, I think in their is, head or pri uh, privacy Donovan concerns. I'm being tracked. Yeah. Sorry. The oh, f one thing that came up, and um, at one point, you know, I've, I've met with the center merchants a number of times. I know at one point there was interest there in one or two um, drop-off up spots in the vicinity of, of Broadway Plaza. And I know that, that, that in the original proposal, there was going to be a, a certain grace period where, where the, the meters would be free and the, and the logistics around that just weren't workable. Was there any discussion of that at, at all? Uh, um, of a uh, drop spot? I, we did. Yeah, with all of the restaurants in there now and some of the... the you know, we, we weren't looking uh, so much there. We did have the discussion, um, again, led by um, really informed by Leland about um, kind of looking at those spots, the additional spots on Medford Street for right. potentially that. Um, so you know, if you do want to go in and buy a ticket or something yeah. along those lines, um, I, I don't think we're ready to, we're certainly, as I said before, not ready to do the 15 minutes, um, but, but that is something that we have um, considered and that's definitely on our radar. Right. And we're, and we're meeting again Thursday morning and we can bring that back yes, to the committee course. and talk about it. And my understanding is that, that the committee is going to stay together as kind of the, the recommending body around the parking benefit district? Correct. Is That's that correct. correct. And, um, and, you know, Adam and I, we did a, a little bit for ACMI, and we, we were very clear that we do want to hear people's uh, responses to it. And um, we, we really hope that that will inform us moving forward. Yeah. The only other thing I wanted to say, and I wish I had remembered it earlier this evening while he was still here, I, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Flanagan did a lot of work on this with the parking meter, meter vendors and looking, is that, is that correct or is that? Uh, Laura's really been the work. Laura's done, uh, done a lot this, of it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, thank Laura because I think every one of us when we run for this office have, uh, 
that was asked at some point about parking meters and, and I, I think one of our nearest and dearest priorities probably for every one of us was to get rid of those those old ones so I'm thrilled so thank you to the committee for the report and I'll I'm happy to move approval to oh well I guess you should move approval okay. yeah, uh, so I, I will move approval yeah, yeah, I'll I'll Mr. Thank you. Thank you. By Mr. Kiro. Uh, Mr. Dunn so the spaces on the street are going to be pain display as well no, no, those will just be, be traditional regular. meters. Oh, they're just going to be traditional meters. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And they're going to accept um, card, and card and coin. Card and coin. And because I, I guess um, all the lot, and I didn't know this, the one, the lots and the meters before, the big issue was dollars getting stuck, and that's yeah. why they would always stall and freeze, and um, so we that we had to get away from that. Oh yeah, no, I'm, mm. so card is a big win. As yeah. Far, as far as I'm concerned, okay. Um, so I guess. Uh, uh, I, I'm happy to support it. I'm glad the old meters are, are, you know, are disappearing. I was hoping as well for a pay um, <laughs> by space as well because I really think that pay remotely is really another really good option for a lot of people. So, but um, we're still we're in the land of improvement, and so improvement <laughs> is good. Uh, my other thought question was um, so one of the things, if I remember correctly, from the consulting report was doing uh, periodic, you talk about monitoring, but like what specifically inventory, like, you know, vacancy rates and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What's going to be the, how are we going to do that? What's going to be the time frame? When are we going to do it next? When should we, you know, how, do, how does that work? So I th think we're going to have to lean on TAC again, who did the initial counts. Yeah. Uh, for either their recommendation, their bodies, their expertise, whatever it might be. And I would say we should probably do it you know, after the meters have been up for a, uh, the, the street meters have been up for a month or so, so it'll be sometime probably early next year. Uh, see, see how it's working, do a count, and then make adjustments. Mm. Let me ask a different, more open-ended question I probably should have asked first, which is, so what's the, what are we going to be monitoring? How are we going to know whether it's working or whether it's not working or what needs to be improved? What are we going to be looking, like, you know, this stuff is going to roll out. What are, what are you going to be checking to see? Percentage of available spots. But that's not going to, but, but is there anything that we're going to get with faster feedback on, do you think? Like, so, I mean, if we wait for that inventory, that's month, you know, yeah. it's a bit out there. I wonder if there's anything, like, from the meter machines or anything like that. I don't know. Enforcement yeah. rates, tickets, something like that. We, we will be able to get those things. We'll be able to get, um, well, you know, I was going to say we'll be able to get Maybe how long someone stayed. you can make that a Thursday morning agenda item. Yeah, you know, it's defining the metrics we, we actually want to yeah. recommend. I think that would be a really healthy yeah. thing. But still talk about it, but I'm just saying, yeah, I, yeah. I know that we're hitting you with some new questions and Mr. Byrne that um, are coming fresh off the table, but please continue. I didn't mean to. Well, I was going to say, we do have the uh, ability in the future to add technology that actually can see the car in the spot on the street and tell you how long they're actually there. So if we had that, then we'd be able to get some really good data on how long people, not how much they paid for, but how much they're actually... And, and there, the, that, that would give us a big yeah. picture to a number of metrics. Mr. Byrne? Um, and that is also, um, that um, kind of picture idea is also where the 15 minute for free came into play mm -hmm. before. And when we decided not to go out with that technology at this point in time, that's uh, kind of what dismantled the free 15 minutes. And is that a cost choice? It was. Roughly ballpark, what, would, what was that? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, I want to say it was about fifty dollars per meter, so it was pretty significant when you mm. added it up. Fifty dollars per meter, like okay. kind of it looked like a little camera, yeah. And, and a monthly service charge to operate it. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kira. Yeah. Thank you. I'm sorry. I forgot one of my questions or, or, or comments. Obviously, with the new regulations, we'll need new signage, and I want to respectfully suggest that the the location of the current signs as you're coming into the lots are just not readable because you're driving in, you're concentrating on getting, making the turn and getting in there. And we have a big long parking regulation there. I, I want to respectfully suggest that having those signs next to the meters them, themselves or dispersed within the lot makes a lot more sense. So you, your feedback somehow already made it to our sign placement subcommittee who have mm -hmm. recommended different spots that, that are within the lot. Great. Right. And I, I will say, Howard, um, I think it was Howard and Laura, they, they went and walked around the lot several times to pick out the right spots for it, and um, they, are, um, they were fabulous with that. So. Okay. Um, piggybacking on that, um, as many of those P parking signs that we can get out on Mass Ave mm. and anywhere else 
I think that I know when I drive through different cities and towns, sometimes even when I'm in Providence, Rhode mm -hmm. Island, or Concord, New Hampshire, that draws me to the fact more that, oh, there is parking, and then I look at the businesses that are around there. Mm -hmm. um, the second question I have, um, I, I, and I understand in terms of the $50 per meter, um, sort of have, uh, have, having some sort of a sensor in there, um, and how that really is sort of cost prohibitive. Plus the other thing that goes in my mind is, as each one of those breaks down, I mean, I hate to say this, but like my yeah, computer printer and transcriber, which I bought all at the same time, inevitably go within the same month. Um, so I'm thinking of that cost there. Uh, my last two comments or questions would be, um, and I think this one's probably rhetorical, but I know that we all have had the experience down at the lots, the way that the um, parking stations are placed. Um, especially in the winter, especially with people, you know, the elderly, someone with a baby carriage, you know, if you're not particularly tall, you would have to stand up on that curb and, and, and protect it from the sunlight. So I'm assuming that these new stations will be... Yeah, I, I think that what well, you'll find, and if you're even uh, go out there right now, you won't see those issues that we had in the past. Great. So okay. Engineering redesign to make them yeah. safer. And Excellent. And then my... Um, well, Last question, and then a comment that I want to uh, make on the compromise. The, um, I'm not going to say this right, the EV ch charging station, mm -hmm. um, who installs that? Is that a vendor, and has that been costed out in terms of, I'm thinking about the old parking meters that we have, and every time they broke down, and you know, it was another cost to us. I'm, I'm so unfamiliar with that. If, so yes, uh, Seth Federspiel, who's a TAC member, came and presented to the committee on electric vehicle charging technology, and he gave us a bunch of pricing options. And there, there's a few tiers of how fast you want to charge, if you want two charging heads or one charging head. Uh, so uh, the the technology, I think, is it's it's pretty uh, you know far along. It's not first generation. Uh, so there there would be uh, an install cost on the high end, about fifteen thousand, or the low end maybe 7,000, we could probably get a state grant to pay for the whole thing mm -hmm. to install. <clears throat> and then we'd have to uh, look at uh, an annual maintenance contract to keep it mm -hmm. up and running so it wouldn't fail. And in, in terms of the generating power source, is it something that is in the infrastructure in the ground, or is it something that everything is, is constructed above ground? The, the infrastructure would be in underground. Okay, and have we looked into that to find out that that's going to be... Okay, because I'm, I'm just... We're not there yet. That, that could be... An impediment right. of where we put it. Okay. All right. And I would just say, um, just ha having been in Boston and seeing them sort of redesign some of those EV stations, some of the uh, equipment above ground, I know the city, you've mm -hmm. seen it, has done sort of an extra protection oh, out yeah. there. Because for some reason, I don't know if you break up with your boyfriend, girlfriend, or lose your dog, you that might be something station. you can take it out on and I don't mean to make light of that and then I do want to say um, uh, originally when I had heard we were moving all the spaces the taxi uh, stand designated spaces into the lot I was not in favor of that so I'm, I'm very happy to hear that there's a compromise I think it was really important for me it's really important that there's visibility on Mass Ave um, for people especially people who are use taxis and are familiar with, you can go there on Mass Ave and know that this, that's a taxi cab stand. So I do appreciate um, the compromise of, I think you said keeping two? Yep, two will be on. And, and you know, I think that if we um, received data that showed uh, there was even more usage of it, we might have even uh, left all of them, but there was no data available to us to make an informed decision on it. So thank you. Mr. Kirov. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think that you opened a, a great line of questioning about maintenance. I, I was just curious, are these new meters, are they uh, purchased or leased, and what is the, the maintenance arrangement for them? The all, well, so the, the, uh, the, the lot meters are purchased. We'll, we'd also be purchasing the street meters. Uh, we buy uh, a good number of spare parts for the lot meters. Uh, and then we do have a, a maintenance contract, uh, but they also do some training of our staff to be able to do some some minor so our staff is first line and, and their mm -hmm. second line okay thank you um i know we have a vote uh is there anybody here who would like to make a brief comment or have we answered all your questions um mr Adosha, you want a second pass 
I'll give you one minute. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, and just, now I have my question. Okay, just two questions. Mm -hmm. How many street meters are we dealing with? Do we know? Probably approximately 500. 500? Mm -hmm. And that's all within that area? That seems, okay, all right. Um, getting back to the charging thing, what, what kind of cost is involved in doing that if somebody wants to plug it in? How do you, I, I, don't, I don't have one of those, so I don't know. How would we charge for it? The user. <clears throat> so we could either just charge for the space at a higher rate because they're using electricity, okay. or we could find we could charge for the actual electricity that's being utilized. Yeah, I, I see them in lots here and there, but I never really approached them to see what the deal yeah. was. And um, I, you know, it, it is one of those things. And when, when we first started talking about it and got the presentation, I, I would even say that I I was a bit reluctant to install them. But I think that from um, you know Vision 2020 survey this year um, did address basically kind of ask if there was interest in it and, and I think there from that survey we saw there was and and I think it's really just how car manufacturing is going I think you know while they might not be so common now um, Corey did provide um, Officer Rato did provide information on how many electronic electronic vehicles are in Arlington and um, and what we'll see is that continue to grow and I think it's how the market and you know it's what comes first the chicken or the egg That's type it. of thing All right. The only unanswered one, and I guess we don't have an answer at this point, is uh, what's going to be the increase in the number of uh, people policing this thing? Um, so that, that's also something we're, we're still monitoring. And uh, Officer Rateau's on, on the staff, or on the committee with us, and um, we, we have a great um, line of communication with him and understanding the needs of it. Okay, so there will be a few more, or one or two, or whatever. Uh, yeah, we, no, we're prepared to staff it yeah. appropriately. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. One of the good things for us and not so good for Mr. Burnham, the town manager, is this committee, as I understand it, will continue on. Um, and we're going to leave it to these two fine gentlemen um, to put, put this back on the agenda accordingly, as you have been doing um, so far. So on a motion by Mr. Burn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This is going to be awesome. Yes. Good. Thank you. Um, and now uh, agenda item 22, update on the Mugar property site approval application, Mr. Chapdelaine, who will turn it over? Uh, I, I'm actually going to turn it over to town council. I let you call on your own department heads. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Madam Chair. Uh, so a quick update to the, um, our site eligibility uh, issue with respect <coughs> to the Mugar property. Uh, as the board at this point knows, uh, the development team from Arlington Land Realty took the highly unorthodox step of submitting supplemental information and indeed a sort of quasi-rebuttal to the town's or rather the selectmen's uh, comments to mass housing. This is, as I said, highly unorthodox and atypical uh, largely because the process that's outlined by mass housing is that within 30 days of notice of an application to all of you, you're supposed to give your comments and they're supposed to provide a determination on an eligibility application within 60 days. Now, we obviously asked for an extension of time. Uh, there's some other things that went into that, but the long and short of it is, is that the couple things that sort of go up in the air as a result of this uh, supplement and uh, rebuttal are what is the timeline for mass housing making a determination? Uh, what, in fact, does this rebuttal really mean for us? I think it's a fair thing if the selectmen were so inclined to determine that the supplemental information renders it to be a largely new application uh, that certainly would allow the uh, selectmen, if it were their uh, choice to do so, to submit further response. Now, of course, the danger in that is an endless cycle of, of responses, but again, uh, I consulted with our special counsel, Mr. Witten, who's far more familiar with the dynamics of this than, than anybody else uh, that I'm aware of, and he's uh, not quite sure he's seen a supplement and rebuttal of that nature. So take that for what you will uh, in terms of the robustness of the selectman's comment and what that means um, for the mass housing um, process on the Arlington Land Realty application. But um, just to run down, it's uh, largely documentary documentation that they didn't initially provide. There's some commentary and response to um, comments of, of the board. And then there's uh, some information that's essentially just sort of 
truly uh, supplemental. So we did contact Mass Housing to understand uh, their perspective on this, and they said that they would receive further comment from the board if the board was so inclined. What I've asked uh, Mr. Witten, our special counsel, to do is to scrutinize the additional information that they've provided so that at this board's next meeting, if the board is so inclined, uh, we could have you know additional uh, response prepared for the board. But uh, suffice to say, it's not my view that a further hearing is necessary based on what information they provided and the fact that the public meeting or hearing, whatever you want to call it, wasn't necessary in the first place. But I welcome any comments and instructions from you on what you'd like to see, understanding that we're now sort of operating well outside the parameters of a normal site approval uh, process. And that, that may mean many things for Arlington. I don't want to speculate too much about, about that. Okay, and before I uh, call on my colleagues, what I'd first like to say is I definitely am in, in approval of having this on the next agenda when we have a full board, because it's a, a very important issue. And I know uh, Mr. Grayley um, his expertise and um, would be welcomed. Myself personally, I've never heard of this before uh, in terms of ma the limited uh, four or five times that I've had interaction with mass housing. If I'm exaggerating, please. Uh, um, especially um, on the fact that A, this board um, and uh, the town manager, department heads in the town of Arlington, we were really put it on a pretty accelerated um, process in terms of getting little to no information from Oak Tree developers, um, from their public hearing that they had um, down at the Hardy School, from the site visit. They stated over and over again to, was it Mr. Watson, Greg? Greg Watson. Mr. Watson, um, when myself and Carol Kowalski, our planning director, and Corey Beckwith, um, Mr. Chapdelaine, our town manager, myself, when we would start to point out what they had submitted um, in terms of what they were proposing and stating in the site visit, whether it be a matter of a burn or topography or hydrology, they said over and over again, well, th those plans haven't been created yet, which I thought was really unfair, um, especially when we asked for um, an extension and we were granted about half of that. Um, to me, it's very unusual then the oak tree also asked for an extension on their behalf. My opinion would be if we could ask uh, Attorney Heim and Whitten to come up with a response, perhaps two or threefold, um, for the board to discuss initially here tonight, but again at the next meeting with Mr. Greeley, that first of all, for myself personally, I kind of cry foul that, um, in my opinion, they are submitting a brand new project, which they haven't followed the steps. They're taking the steps that they followed for their really no plan that they submitted um, to Mass Housing, and then on the strength of the letter that this board sent, which I'm not going to take, <laughs> that was all the department heads on, and, and the town manager and others on an accelerated schedule that really took this to piece, uh, piece by piece. And now as a result of that, I think my personal opinion, dabbling a little bit in the legal field, that when Oak Tree saw what the Board of Selectmen had submitted, um, I, didn't, I don't think they expected that under the accelerated time frame that we had. Um, and basically, I don't think we're on a fair playing ground because they have submitted the rebuttal um, to something that we haven't even seen yet. So we've commented on their original. So my thing would be, first of all, I would say to Mass Housing, if councils agreed, will you consider, you know, this is a brand new application. We, just, we need to start over and we need to do, you know, the same due diligence, especially around our department heads um, looking at you know, the plans that they kept saying would come are now here. The second request would be, um, if not, I would like to hear from uh, attorneys Heim and, and Whitten um, in terms of what their recommendation would be for us requesting, can we rebut their rebuttal? Can we, you know, since they've started a new process, in my opinion, can we also have the same opportunity? Because um, basically what we did is we took what they presented, and in my opinion, tore to pieces. Um, and they saw that, and I think that's why, my personal opinion, Oak Tree submitted this rebuttal. I'd like us to have the same opportunity through our expertise, uh, town manager and department head, to look at their rebuttal and again submit um, an updated letter to that, because I think we can probably have a good go at that again. Um, uh, but I would like to hear from my colleagues in terms of what we should do by the next meeting, um, anything we should ask uh, Mr. Kiro. I, I, I'm happy to put in the form of a motion the, 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 the 
the two requests that you just outlined and, and um, requ requesting that the town council work with our, our attorney on a, um, a rebuttal to, to uh, mass, mass housing on this um, and, and uh, advise us on, on uh, steps that we can take to, to um, uh, have this deemed a, a new application. Okay. Motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by. Ma Madam Chairman, may I just? Yep. So just to, I'm sorry, I apologize if it wasn't clear before. I, I, I can't say for sure. I think the point does need to be made mm -hmm. that in many ways this puts us in the position of having a new application. It seems unlikely that Mass Housing will actually agree with us on that score. However, they, they already have told us that they would be willing to receive further comment from you. So I just want to let you know that they are willing to receive something further than us. I guess it's technically a sir reply at this point in time. Right. But um, they, uh, so they're, they're, it really just depends on what we want to <coughs> concentrate on. And I, I'm sure Mr. Witten and I would be happy to prepare something for the board's yeah. consideration. And, and the reason I asked the two requests, even no. if the first one is sort of rhetorical, I'm just thinking of legally <coughs> going forward. Mm -hmm. If we want to have something else in our steed that we said from the get-go, uh, and, I, and I want t t town council and attorney Witten's advice, would this be something worthy of, even though we know what it is, that we um, effectually state that this, in our opinion, is a new project and it should be deemed that way. If you say, you know what, that might be a good thing to do because we can use it in our tool of reservoir in the future, or if you say, you know what, that really isn't going to help us. It could hurt us the other way. I just want your opinion on saying, should we ask Mass Housing to consider this as a new request? And then second, give um, your suggestions in terms of the opportunity we can, it seems, avail ourselves of, which is any rebuttal, Mr. Dunn, and uh, anything else my colleagues want. So I'm particularly, like, there are things about the responses, like, OK, they didn't have a bank before that met requirements. Now they say they have a bank that meets requirements. That's one of those things like, fine, you, you, you had a terrible application, and now you've got one that's slightly less terrible. But the thing that we absolutely don't have, haven't had the opportunity to reply to, and that we still should hold them to the original statement until we have time, I think, <coughs> is like the wetland stuff. I mean, I, to me, the, my biggest complaint about this proposal is what it would do to flooding in Arlington and the adjacent towns. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, like, and their original plan was, you know, it skipped over some facts, it had the wrong floodplain, like, it didn't map, there's just a number of huge things. And so they gave a new statement, uh, like, what do they call it, the, the, they, they put in, a, they submitted a new map. But there's no talk about what the new map means according to the plan and stuff like that. And I think that even if, Given my understanding of, so I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to defer to the advice from from, from you and uh, the, uh, Attorney Witten. But uh, to me, it seems to me that Mass Housing is not interested in like probably starting this all over again. But we should remind them about the places where it is there's where they're still falling all over themselves with this application. Mr. Byrne, I am. Um, so I think I agree um, a lot with Mr. Dunn on this, and that if you know, I guess. Uh, if they're already saying they're willing to take, uh, you know, some more comments from the town, um, I, I guess I'd first ask, did they give a time frame for that? They have not. No. I, I, I don't, I will say that I don't think that we're under the gun. So we have time and they certainly have enough time to have it next meeting when the board is fully constituted to have something ready for the board to um, examine at that point in time. So. Thank you, and I guess my, my feelings would be that I, I, I don't, I agree with Dan that they, I don't feel that we have to, you know, say this is a complete new project. I just want to continue focusing on why this is a <coughs> flawed project. And so I don't think it has to be, we don't have to start from, from point A on this, but we just have to continue to drive home the facts of why this is wrong for that part of our community why it will, you know, be a disastrous project for, you know, East Arlington. And I, and I think we have a strong case there, and I, uh, and I know that there was a strong case laid out in our initial letter. And, and if we stick to those points, I think we'll be, um, we'll, we'll continue to be an equally, you know, good spot on this. Okay, I guess I'll leave it to my other two colleagues. I, I would like um, the two, two requests, I understand Mr. Byrne, um, regarding saying, 
this is a new project. And the reason I want that is I want their opinion in the sense of even if we make that statement, um, the reason why I'm making that is I want to start over so that we have the same generous time um, that we had originally with the original application because to me this is pretty much a brand new application so that we're not saying to our department heads mass housing could come back with like they did before we asked for 60 days we got 30 they could come back and say well you now have 15 and we have 15 days to respond to basically a brand new application so if, if it's okay I'd just like you know their recommendations on, on, on you know making that point if it's advisable or not as well as um, as, as Mr. Burnham, um, Mr. Carroll, and Mr. Dunn said regarding um, availing us ourselves of the opportunity for rebuttal. So if that's okay with my colleagues, a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Mm -hmm. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. And thank you. It moves on. And um, I'm going to um, leave this to the town manager and the chairman, Mr. Greeley. And, Attorney Heim to put this on the next agenda um, with any r related items there too. Under correspondence <coughs> received, thanks to Chief Ryan for his leadership um, from Lori Kenshaf on behalf of the Reverend Mata Flanagan and John Hodges, First Parish Unitarian Universalist Church of Arlington. Uh, a request from Jeffrey Hayden from our request answer center regarding de possible designation of a straight lane across Mass Ave from Park Ave, as well as correspondence from uh, Barbara Brees, who is from Bedford, Mass, but she outlines an incident that happened to her and has a suggestion and request need to improve bike path, path safety by the soccer fields. Uh, motion to receive by? Move for seat. Mr. Second. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, any comments, questions? If not, all those in favor? Oh, anybody? No. Well, I was wondering if we wanted to make referrals on on, on two of these. If we wanted to re mm -hmm. refer the straight lane question to the. Uh, well, I think if it, since it's in the request answer center, has it already been? <coughs> so it, it was oh, in the request in the answer center to the board of selectmen. Okay. That's why it's here. So I, I would recommend we first refer it if the board's uh, willing to engineering. Okay. And then depending on what they say, to tack if necessary. Okay. So that would be your motion? Yes. Yeah, so Can I make a comment oh. on that one? So um, I'm okay with that as a referral, but I will say that that is something that we, that we as a, that's one of the intersections we uh, have spoken on this board while I've been there, oh, and we, we, did oh. divide, we did design it that way. And, we, and when we said yes on that, I think one of the explicit stated risks of it was this concern that this uh, gentleman has right here. And we chose to go it with this in particular direction because of the queuing that happens in the mornings um, all the way back up through uh, Downing Square. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so any designation of a straight lane there will increase the queuing back through Downing Square, mm -hmm. which is why we chose not, the, which is why we chose to choose, which is admittedly a relatively unorthodox uh, situation because generally one lane or the other is stuck behind somebody trying to turn. But at the moments where the brief exciting moments when both lanes are free <laughs> and you can actually go through in the morning. That is the time when it gets, uh, it can get a little bit uh, white knuckle. Uh, so I will say, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear another thought on it and see if there is an alternative, but I will say that I, I think we did a lot of work on this one and uh, related to the Downing Square and that was the choice that we made. So it's, you know, Downing Square and that, that, that connected intersection of, you know, we're going to be here talking about them for a long time. So, uh, but in the interest of process, we have the uh, request um, through our request to answer center on Mr. Kiro's motion to refer to engineering, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Um, anything else? Well, Mr. Kiro? I, I was just curious. On, we, we did get the other um, correspondence <coughs> from Bedford, and it came to us. I, I was wondering if it makes sense to just refer it over to Park and Rec so that they're aware, aware of it. I realize, though, that anything like this would have to go through capital budgeting and all. They are, they are aware of it, but I think a referral to them nonetheless, it, it would be appropriate on the board's behalf. Yeah. Okay. In town council, is there anything that you have on that? or? I think that uh, I think that a referral to the Park and Recreation Department is appropriate. Okay, Thank motion you. by Mr. Kiro to refer to Park and Rec, seconded by Mr. Yes, Brown. second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed on a motion to rece correspondence received, which we have one <laughs> thing, one item left. 
Um, made by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? New business, Mrs. Kropelka? The only thing I have to say is that um, I feel, the committee feels that we had a successful town night and town day, and I've had several emails from people, residents, businesses, thanking the Board of Selectmen and the committee, and I think the committee, including myself, did a great job for the two days. That's it. Thank you. I'd like to thank uh, Attorney Ed Marlenga for his assistance in uh, examining an insurance issue for Town, State, Town Day. Scared the crap out of me. I thought you were announcing another person. No. Okay. Okay. Another one. <laughs> uh, Mr. Town Manager. Is that Attorney? I, yes. I, I heard that it took the, f the four members that are here tonight to take the chairman's place at Town Day on the stage. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> no, you heard that the acting chairman was so magnanimous that she made sure that she wasn't up there all me all the time, which is <laughs> Most people would get sick of very, <laughs> very nice. I think that's, but um, so, seriously, sorry. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. A uh, couple quick pieces. Um, uh, earlier today, we, uh, or tonight, we, we saw Andrew and his departure, but as the board knows, uh, Carol Kowalski, uh, planning director, is also moving on to an assistant town manager's role for development uh, in Lexington. Uh, similar sentiments to what was discussed about Andrew. Um, you know, very good opportunity for Carol, uh, a loss for Arlington. Uh, so, so, you know, ha happy for her, not happy to see her go. Uh, but I did want to let the board know we will be, uh, we're, we're just refining the job description now. We'll be posting that position very shortly. Uh, during the interim, uh, Laura Weiner will be the acting planning director while we search, um, uh, while we search for Carol's replacement. So I wanted to let the board know that. Uh, also planning related, I want to let the board know that the Secretary of uh, Economic Development, Jay Ash, will be in Arlington tomorrow. Uh, at 2.30 to meet with me, and I'll have Carol and Ted Fields up. Uh, basically, I think he's doing a tour of almost every community in the Commonwealth. Uh, Commonwealth. He's trying to learn about community priorities, so uh, we'll talk about the master plan. We'll talk about some of the efforts that have been made in regards to co-working space, uh, of which I think there's going to be some actual produce very soon. Uh, but we'll also take the opportunity to talk to him about the Vuga property. Uh, he is the secretariat that has sort of the quasi-relationship with mass housing, so uh, I don't know what he could do, but having, a, having his ear will be of benefit. So uh, I, I know I'm telling you now, if any of you are uh, available uh, between 2.30 and 4 and you want to stop in and meet the secretary, uh, that would be great. Can I recommend that you have a map of the wetlands hanging on the wall? We do. We do. We do. We, we, we've got... We, As you can see, there's four square feet here that you can build on. We can definitely do that. <laughs> uh, two other quick things. Um, as the board recalls, uh, the, the last bargaining unit that we did not have agreement with uh, was with AFSME. Uh, this week, uh, we re or this week, no, last week, we would have been just today, uh, we reached a tentative agreement with AFSME that we'll go back to the bargaining unit for ratification. So I'll keep the board uh, up to date on that. Uh, and then finally, uh, this Saturday, I'll be leaving for attendance at the ICMA annual conference. Uh, so I believe um, I'll send the board a, a note on this, but Doug will be uh, stepping in as a acting town manager, so get ready, Doug. Uh, and that's all I have for new business. Thank you. Mr. Byrne? Um, you know, other than thanking everyone uh, who played a part in town day, uh, particularly the selectman's office, um, that's all the new business I have. Okay. Mr. Carroll? Uh, thank you. Yeah, I'll echo, I'll echo that as well. It was a wonderful day, and the weather held out for us. Um, I did want to note uh, on, a, on a more uh, serious note, I. Um, had the opportunity to attend. Um, there was a vigil for uh, victims of, of uh, substance abuse at the high school uh, two weeks ago. Um, Chief Ryan participated. Our fire department uh, participated as well in this. And it was quite um, moving and quite um, uh, alarming to see just how many people in our community have been directly touched um, by, by losses um, to substance abuse. And um, <clears throat> to that end, I, I did want to let, I think I, the office sent something around, I did want to let folks here and, and at home know that um, Attorney General Maura Healy will be in town on October 13th here in Town Hall, um, keynoting a panel discussion on, on this issue. This has been her top priority. Uh, for, for her um, administration. Um, she's actually worked closely with the governor as well on this. Um, she, she'll be here from 6.30 to, to 8.30, um, and it'll be a panel discussion. 
I think the police department is is is, is uh, participating in that. Uh, I think uh, Mike Duggan from from Wicked Sober is participating in that, and a few other folks. Um, it's it's a very um, important topic, and so I hope that folks will come out and uh, and learn what they can do to help battle that. It's being uh, sponsored by the um, Arlington Youth Health and Safety Coalition. Mr. Dunn. Uh, nothing except for thanks about uh, Town Day. Uh, I also enjoyed the day, as I know thousands of other people did. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, I guess with that, I'm sure, Nick, you're really impressed with the way this meeting has been run. <laughs> this will be the standard by which you hold Mr. Greeley to in the future. <laughs> if, uh, with that, I'll take a motion to adjourn by so so Mr. Burns, second, second by Mr. Kira. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, we are adjourned. Thank you, AACMI.